So yes, here we are, speaking yet again. You know, every time I, I'm asked to speak at events, I often say to myself that, what am I going to talk about each time? I pray about it. I think about it. Maybe it could be something based on what had happened to me that week or happened to me a few months ago or sometimes even years ago. You know, so for the last week or so, I've been thinking about what will I share today? What, what, what should be? Yes, it's about talking about the success of, in the entertainment industry, but from what perspective? So I said I was going to look at, I now put together a list of tips that I know have worked for me. Um, and sometimes it's really about personal experience. It's about the things that work for you. And all one can share are those things that work for you, hoping that you can then find a way to customize it to possibly work for you. If it works for me, it may also work for you. It's sort of like a recipe. So I put together a number of tips. Um, and I'm a little bit, I'm getting more and more active on social media now. So every month also I share a tip on social media. I know my guys want me to be way more active, but I'm like, listen, I'm 52 years old. So, you know, I'm leaving that to this generation. So, you know, I mean, sometimes, I mean, I'm absolutely amazed about what goes on on social media. I mean, some people are having a bath. I'm in the bathroom. I'm doing my hair. I'm, look at my new shoe. Look, I'm like, I can't keep up with all that. So... Um, I do try and sort of tweet maybe once every other day and also use it for the... It's important we use social media for the right reasons. I think there's a lot of wrong reasons um, and it's become sort of like the lifeline of so many people that are really fantasizing about their lives rather than actively doing something about their lives. So please, you know, it's not my tip number one, but I would say please, let's use social media in a positive way that can impact ourselves and impact our society and the people around us. So I have a few tips um, for success that I'm going to share. And um, my very first, before I actually go into the tips, let's talk about why we're here. Maximize your influence. You know, and what is influence? Influence is such an important thing for all of us to have. You know, and I actually went online and I said, what is the definition in terms of, you know, how, what is that definition? And it's the capacity to have an effect on one's character, development, behavior to something, someone, some situation around us. That is such, I mean, those words are so impactful in that we all have influence, but how are we using the influence that we have on the people around us and the things that are happening around us. I don't think there's anyone in this room that doesn't know about what's happening in the United States of America when we look at Trump and we look at Clinton. And many never ever thought that Donald Trump would get to where he is right now. But that is because he's had the capacity and the ability to influence a certain group of people who for whatever reason, I mean, I was watching CNN this morning. Yes, I always, please, always watch Ebony Live TV. But this morning, I was watching CNN, and there was, some, there was some guy that said, I don't care what he has done. I am voting for him. And I'm thinking, wow, look at the impact of the influence that Donald Trump has had on that. And they're saying that, you know, he's so close, you know, in the polls, they're neck and neck. I'm thinking, wow, how can he be so close to someone, in my opinion, that is as principled? as a Hillary Clinton. But again, it's back to influence. Maybe he's saying what they want to hear. If we go back to Brexit in the United Kingdom, nobody ever thought Brexit would happen. We all went to bed, wake, I was in England at the time. I woke up and Brexit had happened and I was like, oh my God, what's going on? You know, but it is again, the influence they have and what they are saying to get those votes. It doesn't mean they're gonna do it, it's just simply the influence that we have on the next human being around us. And influence depends on how strong is the next human being that you are conversing with or you're communicating with. And that's why people, that's why suicide bombers exist. Why should anyone be able to tell somebody that you're gonna have seven brides in heaven if you go and throw this bomb somewhere and kill millions of people? It is because they've been able to impact that person in a way and manner that they know they can influence them. So let's all be very strong-minded about the influences that we pick up around us. So now into the tips for success. The thing that I put first, and I can be standing on this stage, yes, I've got my high heels on, I've got my weave, I've got my eyelashes, I've got all of that, but believe me, that all comes off at night. 
or before I get up in the morning. And the very first thing, the thing that I would say has been the most successful thing for me in my entire life has been putting God first. So you may look at me and you may think, oh yeah, she's a bit of a, you know, fine. Yes, I like to look glamorous, but I don't think there's anything wrong in that. And I want to encourage all women to please look as glamorous as you must. Because that is why God created us, is for us to be beautiful. So we must be beautiful. We must look beautiful. We must keep fit. We must eat the right things and do all the necessary things to stay beautiful on the outside. But it's important also to have that relationship with God on the inside. I don't have to put it on my forehead. But believe me, I have recorded over a thousand episodes of Moments with Mo. We have been running Ebony Life Television. We're in our fourth year now. There is nothing that we have done that I have not said, let us pray first. Let us put God first. So for me, if anyone says, what is the key to your success? And success is relative. I'm not where I want to be yet. It's a journey. I want Ebony Life Television to be one of the most recognized TV channels across the world. So I'm still very much on that journey of success. So I'm not sitting down and thinking, oh, I have arrived. Because I haven't arrived yet and probably never will. Because there must always be something that's pushing us to do better and to do better and to do better. So for me, it's putting God first. It's actually, even at the point of visioning, which is my second tip for success. You know, when you are visioning, at the point of deciding on what it is that you must do, it has to be the vision is the cornerstone to any successful business, venture, idea, relationship, you name it. If you can't vision it clearly, it's not going to happen. So it's very important that you're able to understand the goals and the objectives of what you're trying to achieve, how you're going to achieve it, what vision do you have, how are you going to visualize it. Some people believe in doing those maps whereby they actually will physically look, get a magazine and cut bits of pieces of things out and say, this is how I want this thing to look. This is how I want, when you want to build your house, I'm sure you all have a vision in your head of how, how you want your home to look, right? So when we're running our businesses or when we're doing those things that are important to us, what is the vision? So for me, if I you know, relate it back to myself, when I started Moments with Mo, for example, um, which I started in 2006, I looked at television in Nigeria and I said to him, and I had no media experience. So never think that, oh, you must be a champion of that thing before you do it. We can all learn about how to do those things. So I say to myself, I want to, you know, start a talk show. Because I think, not just because I want to sit there and look pretty, which I am. No, that's, that's not the reason. The reason is to be able to have a platform to engage. A platform through which I can communicate, I can anchor, I can talk about topics that are important in a local environment. Now, I go along to Mnet, you know, cold, absolutely cold. So never have any fears about the fact that, can I go to someone I do not know? Let me tell you something else. Most of the people that have helped me in my life have been complete strangers. The people that I really, really know that are my friends, I'm not saying they don't help me, but in terms of when I look at all the businesses that I have developed, I must say my investors, my partners, in most cases have been complete strangers. And I think that also adds to the point that you know that you are on the right path. Because at some point or another, you're going to be introduced to people in your life that are going to be those that are going to help you achieve the vision you have that you want to realize. But to go back to the fact that here I am saying I want to start a talk show Moments with Mo, I had no experience. And, you know, I've shared this testimony a few times. I literally was sleeping, woke up in the middle of the night, and I always sleep with a notepad by my bed. And you may want to do that sometimes, it may help you so that, because sometimes you wake up in the morning, you have forgotten what was going through your mind at three o'clock in the morning at that time. So I have a notepad continually. And I'm a writer. I know today um, the lady that actually brought me in said, do you have an iPad? I believe in iPads, but sometimes if, if I'm sitting here now, standing here, and the iPad refuses to function, what will I say? But at least my paper cannot disappear in front of me. So, <laughs> so that's why I've got a sheet of paper here. So I made my notes you know, that night to myself as I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. And it was as if God was, I mean, I was just writing and writing and writing and writing. 
how Moments with Mo was going to be, the vision for Inspire Africa, I was just writing it all down. And I woke up in the morning and I couldn't believe what I had written. And I took those notes and converted it into a PowerPoint presentation. In my previous life, I used to run a consulting agency. So presentation skills are really important. Whatever idea you have in your business, it's important you are able to communicate it effectively to the people around you that are going to buy into that vision. So if you don't know how to use a PowerPoint presentation, please, I really would like to encourage you to learn how to do that. So I put my notes down. I made, you know, made it into a beautiful presentation, started now going out and engaging you know, people and saying, this is the plan that I have. And initially I spoke to professionals that I had known, you know, maybe a few bank MDs here and there, other colleagues in the oil and gas industry, and they were really concerned for me. They were like, Mo, you want to become a TV presenter? And you see, that was the bit of the vision that they could see at that point. So I therefore had to elaborate again and say, Yes, I'm going to present this show, but you have to understand that it is important that you know, media is such an important tool of communication. Without media, how many of us would know what's going on in the world today? How would we even know what's going on in Nigeria today? Every form of media, from radio to television to the internet to music to fashion, is all part of that value chain of entertainment. Okay, fine, this is what you want to do. How, you have to put the building blocks in place, right? It's all very well having this big idea about you have a project that you want to do, but how are you going to make it happen? And it's in, you know, the difference between having a dream come true and not come true is the action in between. We have to move from a place of thinking and fantasizing and visioning, which is really important, to a place of doing. And that's often sometimes where we lack and where we fall down. It's when we get to a point of how am I going to execute? What are the building blocks? And one thing that I do really well is my to-do list every day. I look at it myself, I'm tired, but it's okay. Let's start to break down all the nitty gritty. Okay, I've never done this before. I need to go on a training course. Okay, you want to go on a training course? Where am I going to go on the training course? I've got to go on the internet. I've got to do the research. I've got to find the best courses. I've got to look at the cost of going on the course. When can I go on the course, etc., etc. That was one part of it. Okay, you're going to make this TV program. Where are you going to put it? I said, okay, fine. Let me go along to Mnet. So I went along and had a conversation with them at Mnet. And normally they will only... Um, it's only when they put out a submission to say, okay, we're looking for this or we're looking for that. They weren't looking for nothing. I just went along there. So I had a meeting with them. Thank God, after sending several emails, it's not on the first email that someone is going to reply you. Sometimes it could be the hundredth. It could be the two hundredth. It could be the number thousand email. One thing is never give up. I send emails until they get tired and they're like, okay, come for the meeting. So eventually, after I think about six months, they were like, okay, come in for this meeting. So I went in, I had the meeting, had a beautiful presentation to make. You know, eventually they were convinced. But initially they said to me, we have the Oprah Winfrey show, we have the Ellen DeGeneres show. And I said, I know you have these shows, but how does that affect my life living in Lagos, Nigeria, or the life of all of us here? Something as simple as going on a diet. If I'm looking at the Oprah Winfrey show, she's probably going to say, eat asparagus and eat spinach. Am I going to find asparagus in Lagos? No. So let me find something that I can eat in Lagos that I can still diet and I know it's going to work for me, right? So maybe if I'm eating beans in the morning for breakfast or I'm eating a little bit of moi moi or whatever the case may be, but let's localize it. We also, as much as we are dealing with simple things like I want to be on a diet, we're dealing with fundamental issues on Moments with Mo at that time and still now. Domestic abuse your husband is beating you, you don't know what to do. Okay, the lady in America can call 999 or 111. What does the lady in Nigeria do when she's being beaten by her husband? What does she do? She needs to have somewhere to go, someone to talk to. So we bring people like Josephine that runs Project Alert on the show to come and talk about this is what you need to do to get out of it. Yeah? I've had Sisniki on the show talking about the great work and promoting the work she's doing in the orphanages that she's, that she's running. So we have run so, so many episodes talking about local celebrities, local heroes, and those that have become, gone, gone from being victims to victors, and ordinary people doing really incredible things. And that is what Moments with Mo became, and that is what I wanted it to become. And that is how that dream was realized. 
But I had to go as far as America to look for a role model, which was Oprah Winfrey. She had a box set of about her 25 years in the industry at the time. I bought it, I watched it, I studied it. I had a trainer that I used to train with every weekend in Lagos. He would record me, I would be practicing with sort of like a, um, a guest, would play back, he would say, no, do it this way, do it that way. So I had to be able to put all those building blocks in place. So I had this meeting with Mnet, and they then said to me, how are you going to pay for this program? We can't commission. Commission means when they pay you to say, go and go to bed, here's the money. They were not going to commission. They said, would license. License means they're going to pay you X, Y, Z per episode, which means you need to already have made the program already. How am I going to make this program? Okay, I need a studio. I had no studio. Now, we don't have enough schools or hospitals in Nigeria, let alone studio. So, <laughs> ah, nobody had built one at the time. So I was now looking around, how am I going to build a studio? Where am I going to use for a studio? I went to Silverbird. Silverbird said they're going to charge me one million per episode. One million per episode. I can't afford that. So and I said, let me go to City Mall, which is also had a cinema in City Mall. But um, it maybe it will be cheaper because it's not as glamorous as Silverbird. So and I went there. And the guy said to me, it wasn't actually what I wanted. But he said, listen, which is why I'm saying God will order your footsteps once you know you are on the right path. So he says to me, we have this space next door. It's not been finished. It's still pretty much just the carcass. But if you want it, we can rent it to you. But one thing about a studio, you need to have high ceilings. And thank God this space had high ceilings. He now says to me, we can rent the space to you. You know, you can do it up. I was like, wow, great. Thank you so much. I was able to tick the studio. But no, I didn't have money to pay for the studio. So I went around making presentation upon presentation, talking to people, convincing them they have to sponsor these other benefits. You must find benefit for your sponsors. You know, people just think, oh, I want you to be my sponsor. Sponsor of what? What is the benefit to them? So you must be able to offer them value. So it was very important for me to be able to put pen to paper to say, if you are going to be a sponsor of Women's with Mo, this is what I would do. My very, very first ever sponsor was actually MTN. I said, okay, every advert break would be an MTN advert. I would use yellow on my couch. You, I can have you on the show as guest. You can talk about what you're doing in your CSR programs. You can talk about different things on the show. So you have to make it relevant to the sponsor and let them feel a sense of ownership. So I said, okay, well, that sounds really interesting. But when you've made the show, come back and let me know. I still had no money for this show. So another friend of mine who then was running a, pro a project called Incubators to help small businesses get started. I said, how on earth am I going to find money for this thing? He says to me, Mo, you're looking for too much money. Because I wanted to find money to maybe record for a whole year. He says, why don't you break it down into a quarter? Once you can successfully do a quarter, maybe you will then find someone else to go on to the next quarter. I didn't like the approach, but I said, well, listen, I had nothing to lose at that point. So we now cut the budget down to money for a quarter. That's one thing. You've got all the finances in place. Okay, now I've, I needed to now get a, a, a crew, a production crew. Now, we shot four episodes until Mnet accepted them. They were like, this is rubbish, this is rubbish, this is rubbish. So they rejected. It's only on the fourth episode I shot. The first, they said I had to do a pilot. It's only on the fourth pilot that they actually accepted Moments with more. And each time we did a new pilot, my heart was in my mouth thinking, oh, Father, Lord, God. And my first guest was Professor Wally Shoyinka. And I chased him around everywhere, begging him. I'd never done this thing before. But he was like, he, I didn't really know him that well either. We've become very good friends since then. But the point, I wanted to start with someone that people would recognize and they would respect and say, wow, if he's a guest on my show, then anybody, as far as I'm concerned, can be a guest on my show. And... Um, you know, I mean, I've had the privilege of interviewing some incredible people, most of our presidents, so many African leaders, so many celebrities, you know, including Hillary Clinton, by the way, you know, so um, it's, it's, and that's when you know, because how did Hillary Clinton happen? One particular day, um, I get a phone call from the American Embassy in Nigeria, and they're like, oh, she's coming to Nigeria, um, would you like to interview her? I'm like, are you asking me a question or, <laughs> you know? And there was sort of like eight weeks in between when they told me and when it was going to happen. And I said, Father, Lord God, please, I hope they're not going to change their minds. I keep calling, is she coming? Is she still coming? Oh, yes, yes. And it happened in Abuja. I mean, I must say that it was one of the defining moments in my career. And we all need to be able to find those defining moments in our career. So the planning is really important. Now, another thing is, it's really okay to have big dreams, you know. Don't be scared of having big dreams. The bigger the dream, I believe, 
sometimes the smaller you may achieve of the bigger. Because can, imagine if you have a small dream. Because me now, I, want, I have this massive dream of conquering the whole world, which I haven't yet. But if I started by saying I want to conquer Ikeja, then maybe I'll only conquer my house. So <laughs> let me start by saying I want to conquer this amount of space or this thing. And then I may land with a quarter or a percentage of that. Don't be, ever be afraid of having big dreams. And sometimes, an, another, another thing that I play around with in my mind is, whatever you're thinking right now, whatever scares you the most about the vision you have for what it is that you want to do, is probably the thing that you should be doing if you're not already doing it. So if there's something that's going through your own mind right this second, and you're like, oh, it's too big, I can't think, I don't even want to think about it. Because sometimes we just put those things away, thinking, oh no, it's not for me, who am I? Those that have done it, they, they're just human beings like you and I. So if they can do it, we can do it. And I think sometimes we underestimate the value within ourselves. We must look to know that we can achieve, you can achieve anything that you put your mind to. I have a saying that also came in the middle of the night that day that if you can think it, you can do it. It starts with a simple thought, a simple idea. I'm sure when Obama woke up and said he wanted to be the president of America, yes, they laughed at him. But he had a dream. He was that, can you imagine wanting to be the president of America? And he had that dream. And I'm sure he must have been afraid, but he decided, I'm going to exercise this dream. I'm going to work on this dream becoming a reality. And we can see all the building blocks that that man put in place to become the president of America. They cannot find one thing wrong with that man. Because if they could, he would never have been the president. So his entire life, he'd been working towards that goal, knowing that I need to have a clean slate, I have to, I have, to have a clean record. The worst they could say was, oh, they said he was born in Kenya, but we know that eventually they knew he was born in Hawaii. But some people thought they would say, put that out there. They couldn't find anything on this guy. So it's about preparation. How prepared are we for the dreams that we have? Because if we don't prepare to take on those dreams, it may never happen for us. So if things aren't particularly in going in that direction, start to work on it. It's like saying you want to lose weight, but you never go to the gym. You imagine yourself being a size 10, but you go home and eat Eba at 11 o'clock at night. It's not going to happen. But if you, you know, look at your diet, maybe only after seven, exercise, do all the right things, then you're going to see the weight drop off little by little. It's really okay to have big dreams. It's worth the effort when they come true. You will know how far you can go when you pursue your passion and never stop trying. Passion. Whatever it is, that, you, that thing has to be burning in your stomach like... Like when, like when you eat pepper and it's like, oh, it's, that's the feeling you almost have to have about the vision and the dreams and the things that you want to do in your life. If it's not burning in your gut, if you don't wake up excited about what more today can I do to achieve my dream, then you may not be pursuing your dream. It has to be burning. It has to come from within. Always have the courage and conviction to challenge the status quo. Never think because it has not been done that you cannot be the one that can do it. You know, there's a book that I would recommend that you read if you've never read it. It's called Blue Ocean Strategy. And Blue Ocean Strategy is a book that talks about red oceans and blue oceans. And red oceans is what we're all swimming in when you're battling with your competitors. You only move into a blue ocean when you've left your competitors behind and you have found value in another area. Who ever thought social media would be what it is today? Did we know Twitter 10 years ago? Everybody has a Twitter account, Facebook. You know, I mean, it's incredible what the world has, even our phones that we're using today. That can look, I, I, I really feel sorry for the, for the camera companies, you know, because I don't know what Kodak does. Maybe they just do high-end cameras now. But our phone is a camera that takes us everywhere. I remember years and years ago, if I took my kids on holiday, maybe we'll go to Euro Disney or Disneyland or whatever. You must make sure you had your camera with you. Because if not, you can't take pictures. But now, all I need is my phone. What's happened to those companies? They are still swimming in the red ocean. They didn't move into the blue ocean. The apples have come. The blackberries have come. And even blackberry is still back in the red ocean right now. You know, so it's about innovation. Look at Uber. Uber is such a major blue ocean company. We've known taxis to exist forever. 
in the United States, in the UK, they fought Uber like nobody's business. The black cabs are like, no, we've been driving black cabs for 100 years. We're not going to have this Uber business here. The people that set up Uber, all they had was technology at their fingertips. They don't own the cars. They don't pay the driver no salary. As soon as you just go, you get picked up in the Uber. You know, there's even no cash changing hands. You know, it is such an incredible business model. It is a blue ocean company. Somebody thought about that. I keep thinking, why didn't I think about it? You know? Because it is such an incredible business. So let us start to think about, you know, challenge the status quo. Don't say because taxes exist. Maybe there's something that's better than Uber that's going to come. It, believe me, it's going to come. We just don't know what it is. But somebody is doing the research and the technology right now on that thing. Is it going to be one of us? Why not? We know we need transportation in Nigeria. We definitely need better ways of getting around. Is it Kekemawa we'll be doing forever? Please, let's see what else we can do in that regard. You know? Don't fight growth. Be growth and explore new opportunities. Some of us try to fight it. Again, going back to that Uber experience. You know, we see our competitors coming into the marketplace. They're bigger than us. They're better than us. We're busy fighting them. You're not concerned about how you're going to move your own business forward. You're looking at the person that's behind, that's, that's actually in front. And you're saying, oh, why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? You know, rather than you thinking about how you can now overtake them, please always think about how you can be the growth. Don't fight it. Ladies, this one is especially for ladies. You may be operating in a man's world, but always retain your femininity. It's a special gift from God. It really is so special. Don't let's kid ourselves. We know we're operating in a man's world. But that's not to say that we don't have... Spe no, men cannot multitask. I'm sorry to all the guys here. They can only think about one thing at the same time. One thing at a time. Don't, if you're sending a man a text message, please, ladies, only ask him for one thing. When he has replied that one, then you send the next one. Because if you put three or four requests in one text message, he can't deal with it. So do one, get the reply. Maybe the next day, do the next one, and so on and so forth. You'll get your responses. It works. <laughs> Spend more time with friends that encourage and support you. It is so important to spend time with those that encourage you. If someone is not encouraging you, why are you with them? You don't need bad, bad vibes or bad negativity around you. Be around those that can encourage you, that can inspire you. They said, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. Yeah? So make sure that you surround yourself with really successful people, people that are doing well, that are climbing the ladder, so you can climb together. And also be a source of encouragement to the people around you. My dream is my dream. Your dream is your dream. We can't take each other's dreams. They're meant for each of us. So sometimes we're also very busy hiding our dreams. You must share your dreams. Because if you don't share them, no one's going to be able to help you achieve them. And I say in this life, there are two types of people. You're going to meet your dream makers, and then they're your dream killers. But one is just as important as the other. What I have noticed in my life with the dream killers is that when you tell them you have an idea, there's nothing they will not do to discourage you. They will tell you everything to discourage you. But you know what? In that discouragement comes words of things that I have to go, ah, let me go back and check when I get home. It's true what they said. But they're thinking they're discouraging you. They're actually helping you. So listen to your dream killers. But your dream makers are going to be those people that you just find. Maybe you're out somewhere. or you're, And it's important to network. Don't think you want to start a business, you're sleeping in your house every day. You have to go out, meet people, go to functions, go to conferences, go to events, and all of that. And you're going to find that you could just be on a plane, you could be anywhere. You're having a conversation and be open to converse and have a smile on your face. Sometimes we're frowning, and the research has been done that <laughs> the research has been done that people that smile get better luck than people that don't smile. They've done the research. So can you imagine walking down the street and you're going, hi. But if you're going, nobody will come near you. But if you have a nice smile on your face, the chances are that you can engage with someone. So your dream makers are those people you're going to meet. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know who they are. But, you know, you're going to say something. Like, if, for example, if I look at Ebony Life Television, you know, um, I've been wanting, that, was, that was another project in itself. I mean, I wake up one day and I say, I want to start a TV channel. And, you know, I have this friend in South Africa. And I called and I said, Sandra, I want to start a TV channel. She's going, okay, Mo. 
really good idea, you know, but the thing is, how do you start a TV channel? I had no TV channel, I had no license, I had nobody to give me the license, I had no, and to run a TV channel, I mean, now, I, people come to me and they say, I want to set up a TV channel. I'm like, oh, please, go back, be my guest. 1,000 hours of content is what we do a year. To create 1,000 hours of content, I don't sleep much, we don't sleep much. We're working around the clock, making programs. Because you see, we're on the DSTV platform, which is a pay TV platform, and we get rated. So if you have the remote control in your hand and you don't like what you're seeing on Ebony Life, you're gonna to flip to the next channel. They're gonna rate me as more you're not doing too well, and that money we promised to pay you, we're not paying you that money, and your channel doesn't grow. So therefore, we have a responsibility to make sure that every time you go to Ebony Life, I can keep you there for at least five minutes. If I can keep you there for five minutes, the chances are I'm gonna be able to keep you for longer. A friend of mine who says to me, Mo, I want to take you to Calabar, you know, to go and interview the, the then um, governor of, of, of Cross River State. And I'd put this thing off for like six months because I don't really like traveling, you know, getting on a domestic flight each time. I literally fast the day before. But, you know, so I was like, okay, I kept putting off this trip. But eventually, I now decided to go to Calabar to do this interview. And it was about four or five years ago. And um, then I wasn't tweeting. And I was still doing moments with Mo at the time. And one of my sponsors was, was a company called South Africa Tourism. And they said to me, if you don't start building your social media following, we're not going to sponsor your show anymore. And which is why I'm saying one thing leads to another. So I said, okay, let me start. It was a new year. I think it was, we had to go to Calabar on the 1st of January. Can you imagine leaving your kids and everything and going? Anyway, I did. I got on a plane, went to Calabar on the 1st of January. So I just sent a tweet message. I think it was my second or third ever tweet saying, Happy New Year, greetings from Calabar. And then I got a response saying, oh, what's happening in Tinapa? I'd never been to Tinapa. I was in the car with another friend. And when I went to Tinapa, we saw the beautiful, I mean, it's, Tinapa is, it is picturesque. It is beautiful. Saw the studio there. It had been built by in the Donald Duke um, administration. Had never been used. World-class studios anywhere in the world. Locked up. So the next day, I had a meeting. Um, I was now going to interview the governor the next day. So I'd never met him before, which is what I'm saying, the people that you don't know are the most, you know. So I now get to meet the governor, and I didn't know what to say. You know, like you're having a chit-chat with him before you start the interview. So the first thing I said was, Your Excellency, I went to Tinapa yesterday, a beautiful place. How come it's all under lock and key? Nothing's going on there, you know. And um, he said, well, we're looking for the right partner. Ah, I said, okay, well, maybe, you know, I said, I'm also trying to get a TV channel started, but at that time, the fear of traveling, I just thought, I can't go to Calabar. I'm just not going to do it. But, you know, on my way back to Lagos, before I left, the governor said, think about it. Is this something maybe you may want to partner with us on? And anytime I get on a one-hour journey plane, I want to be busy till I land. So on the way back, again, this thing came where I was literally writing how we were going to move to Calabar, the operations there, you know, the uh, value add for the, government, for the government of Cross River State and the people locally put together a beautiful presentation and sent it to the governor um, and his team. And they bought, they bought the idea. And to the God that made me, that is how Ebony Life TV started. Now, on the one hand, Multi-Choice DSTV has said to me, that was another battle of four years of getting them to say, okay, we'll give you the channel. But the conditions was, you must have a studio. You must have this. You must have so much XYZ cash. You must have this financial backing. Somehow, Cross River State was able to give us that financial backing that we needed. I didn't know him. Do you understand? So I'm just saying that when all, they say all things work together for those that love God. And honestly, that is how Ebony Life TV got started, right there in Cross River State. I had to move to Calabar, you know, beautiful people, beautiful place. Um, we had to move our entire team of over 160 people. We had to start finding houses, properties. I mean, it was incredible. But again, we were able to make it happen. And that is how we launched Ebony Life Television. To cut a long story short. Never be too proud to say sorry. I think sometimes one of the key things as, in, you know, as leaders or I find at times is where sometimes we're too proud to just turn around and say sorry. And my staff know me. Yes, I scream and I shout a lot. But if I get something wrong, I will accept defeat. I will say I'm sorry because I just think it just brings a newfound respect when you can just say sorry to the people around you. And we're talking about influence. And all these tips I'm sharing with you, I believe, are some of the successes that 
have helped with some of the successes that I have achieved in my life and the things that I do. If you make a mistake, it's okay, you know. Sometimes we think we're not perfect, we're not God, so we're going to make mistakes. But I think what is important is to admit the mistake and to try not to make that mistake again. Let's try to see how we can work on making that situation better the next time. Let's stay humble. Humility is so important. Don't ever let's get carried away in, oh, I've achieved so much success, I'm so successful, look at me, my siren, my this, my that. You know, we, all, we just get so wrapped up in that um, success at times that we forget to understand the meaning of humility, the meaning of compassion, the meaning of listening to the people around us and actually being there for the people around us, you know? And it's important as we build our careers that we find a balance in doing those things. People often think that women, you know, should they be at home being mothers? I have worked all my life. I have two children. My daughter is 26. My son is 20. I want to think that my kids are balanced because I think what is important is to spend quality time with your children. I have friends that are housewives. They spend half their time at the salon doing their hair, or going out for lunch, or going out for dinner, or going to some event in the afternoon. But in their heads, they think that they're there, but they're not really there. But you find you that you're the working mom, knowing that you're in the office from this time to that time. You take the time to spend quality time with your children. And also, my mom, my family, but also, what I also want to say is that it's knowing that you must be there when they need you the most. Like when my son was going to go do his A-levels um, in England, I had to take time off. We had to go and go to all the different schools, go around, you know, I had to take, that was important. So I had nothing in my diary at the time except what I was going to do for him. So we know, which is why I'm saying that we women, we're very good at multitasking, you know, you've got your mom to deal with, you've got your in-laws to deal with, you've got your kids to deal with, you've got the job to do, you've got your own life as well to sort out. But that is a special gift that God has given to women. And whilst I'm on the topic of... Whilst I'm on the topic of talking about women, you know, I want to encourage women here also to please be your sister's keeper. You know, today we're launching an event. We're launching something called the Ebony Life TV Sisterhood Awards. And what we're doing is we're honoring women in our society that have achieved. And it's really important to recognize the achievement of women, but it's also important to celebrate them. And it's also important to be there. We must be our sister's keeper. It is so important for us. I don't know why there's this natural um, resistance amongst us as women to support each other. And it is something we need to address. And as often as I can speak about it, I will speak about it. I can't be you, you can't be me. So why can't I support you as best as I can in achieving your dreams? And you support, men do it all the time. Men are in business, some men are in business, they don't even like each other. But it's a business transaction, they're going to get the deal done. But we women, I don't like her shoe, I don't like her hair, I don't like her... I mean, what's that? In the grand scheme of things, you don't like her hair? Oh, please. You know, so please, let's stop being petty. Let's grow up and, you know, let's take... We can. And women are doing so well right now. Look at England, look at Japan. By God's grace in America, we're going to have the first president of the United States of America. Yes. You know, so... You know, and these are role models. We need to keep building, we need to keep building role models so that we know that one day in Nigeria, there will be a female president as well, you know? I'm sure we'll do better than the men, right? <laughs> Next to last, never stop dreaming. It's your one right that nobody can ever, ever take away from you. You can be in a hot you can be in your face me, I face you. You can be anywhere. Nobody can stop you from dreaming. They can't. It's your mind, it's your head. You have that capacity, that ability. Never, ever, ever stop dreaming, please. Keep having fresh ideas. Never think because you had one yesterday and you executed it that you can't have another one tomorrow because you surely can. And keep dreaming, keep innovating, you know. And last but not least, always share your recipe for success with other people so that they can take and learn from those things as well. Um, and I just want to wrap by saying again, if you can think it, you can do it. You can. Thank you so much. And God bless all of us. Thank you.